Welcome to D-Lab. In this video, we're going to repair a vintage Dynaco ST70 tube type stereo amplifier. I already repaired the preamp. Now it's time to go through the amp and then we're going to put them together and listen to it. Let's go. All right, so your first step of the process for refurbing the Dynaco ST70 is a good physical inspection, okay? It came to the shop this way. The tubes were already removed except for the rectifier. Here's your preamp board. You can see she's pretty dusty dirty. It still has those old black caps that are known for leakage. Looks like it has the original preamp tubes. And the filter cap is also original. That definitely would need to be changed. All right, let's give her a look bottom side. First thing, obviously, is to take a look at the bottom of the circuit board. Look for dark areas indicating overcurrent or bad connections. Over here, you've got the negative bias caps. Those are obviously going to need to be replaced immediately. And I noticed over here on this choke, looks like some wax is goobing out, right? And if you look on the chassis, you can see it's been dripping. So there may be an issue with the output side of that choke, but if you look, it actually goes to the filter cap, which is another indication that it's bad. So the first thing I'm going to change is the main filter cap. And if you look down here, you'll see it's a four section at 500 volt can type. And what I'm going to replace it with is the CE distribution cap at 525 volts. Give her a little bit more headroom. All right, so as usual, I simply take a pair of wire cutters and I cut those terminals off, leaving everything in place, drop out the filter cap, bring the new one up, and then I have a good trail of where everything went. All right, so one thing to point out, you'll notice they have a jumper going across to this ground terminal, and then they have a nut with some lugs providing the ground for the filter cap. The reason is, is normal chassis, you can bend these tabs over and solder them, but this is a chromed chassis, so you're not going to get a good connection. So you have to use a separate ground point. All right, so the cap simply drops out. The other one, being the CE distribution, will drop right back in to the same pattern without any modification. All right, so the cap is partially wired. What I do is I cut those old terminal posts so that I can heat and slide these wires right back off of them and reinstall the way they were so all your lead lengths stay identical and it should fall right back into place like the original. All right new main filter cap is installed looks great now I'm going to move over here and change these negative bias caps then we'll flip it over and change the caps on the PCB. It's time for the PC board work Obviously, I need to check these tubes. I'm going to clean the board. There's a lot of dust and nasty stuff on here. Check the resistors, but all these black caps have to be changed. So these caps have several nicknames. One is a black beauty, and what happens, especially in radios, you'll see this seam here crack, and fluid will come out of these. All right, They actually short out, they'll leak past DC, and destroy your output tubes. So do not leave these black caps in your Dynaco, okay? There's no mojo here, guys. They're old caps. Get them upgraded. I'm soldering in the first of the .01 microfarad caps. You can see right down there is one of the foils. When I bring the leads through, I fold them over and let them lay down the trace for added strength. I don't like to just poke them through. All right, there's the new caps mounted on the PCB. Now I'm going to buzz out these resistors. Now for your information, there are companies that make replacement boards that you can install so you don't have to rebuild this, but the fellow that I'm repairing this Dynaco for just wants to get it going and keep it as original as possible. Well, unfortunately, the stock Dynaco 7199 tubes are about dead, and I don't have any. So I'm going to have to order some of those, but in the meantime, I'm going to check the power supplies on the amp. Alright, so I'm just going to bump the power supplies. I've got the Dynaco on a Variac. So first, I'm going to look at the negative bias. Got somebody out here doing the lawn, so I hope that doesn't interfere too much. 
So you can see we have our negative voltage. That's a good sign. Now we're going to check the high voltage. I've got a 25K resistor hooked across that to discharge it. So we're just going to make sure we got high voltage. And at that point, I have to wait for some parts to come in. All right, same as before. Now we're going to do the high voltage. And of course, this is going to put a charge on our new filter cap for the first time. I'm up to about uh, 70 volts to the rectifier tube. Here comes the high voltage. So that's a good sign. There's about 80 volts applied. You can see she's soaring up there, so I'm going to kill it at this point. Just want to verify the voltages are good. As soon as I get my other parts in, we'll complete the repair. All right, here we go. Systems check, okay? We've got the preamplifier with a CD player feeding it, and we're going into the ST70. So I'm gonna turn on the preamp, and now remember we have the switched outlets that turn on the ST70. So as the ST70 warms up, you're gonna start seeing the bias here I'm monitoring on the octoplug. They're saying approximately 1.56 volts. I'm not running it that hard right now. So here she comes. So, I have some non-copyright music, so I'm going to get hosed in the CD player. So let's see what the stereo sounds like. I've used this CD in the past. I actually bought this on eBay, some guy out of the UK, Pete Smith. Kind of a cool CD, and the best part is, is you can play it and not get in trouble. So here we go. bias. Gotta love that tube audio, it's working great. 